So Marshall McLuhan was a media theorist. Uh, that's often how it gets called. Sometimes a comedian. Uh, communication theorist, as people, people call him, but he was also a devout Catholic, and originally he was a, a, a literary scholar. Um, and I think all of that's important, is that whenever he talks about a medium, or a media, or a technology, he has a very interesting way of describing what a technology is. And he says a technology is anything that extends the human senses. So he refers to a newspaper as a technology, and he says that it extends the sense of uh, sight. You can kind of record things uh, visually, you know, uh, and be able to recall them later visually, um, even though the moment uh, that they were written has gone by. And um, you know, the same thing is true of the photograph, uh, things that we would call medium. But he also extends it to things like uh, a glass. He would say a glass is a media. Um, it is, no, sorry, an example of media. It is a medium and um, it's also technology. It's extending the capacity of, of the body, you know, of touching. You know, I could hold, I could do what the glass does in my hand, but it does it better. It extends it. Um, telephone extends the ear, the sense of hearing, etc., etc. Uh, also, this clothing is an extension of the physicality. The clothing is a media and technology. And what he's trying to do is set up technology and media as rough equivalents because he then goes on to say that um, the medium is the message. When our engagement with the world is altered significantly, we begin to understand the world differently. McLuhan talked about this thing called a sensorium. And the sensorium, he said, was a calibration of the human capacities situated to your context and your place in the world. And when those levels of technology begin to shift culturally, it um, results in a recalibration of the individual sensorium. That's what McLuhan's language is. So when the radio came around and it changed the technology because it allowed ears to be heard everywhere over a large period of time and one person could broadcast and be heard by many, um, the, the, the calibration in individuals who were part of the new radio culture um, suddenly had to figure out what it meant to be in the new culture and what being in the new culture was had to do with the recalibration of like how they interacted with the world, now having a lot more radio and oral chatter um, than they did before. Um, and so <clears throat> McLuhan, um, working with this idea that the, the medium through which we communicate change our sense of the world, and therefore they kind of change our sense of self, said the medium is the message. The medium or process of our time which is electric technology, so this isn't digital, but electric, radio, television, is reshaping and restructuring patterns of social interdependence in every aspect of our personal life. It is forcing us to reconsider and reevaluate practically every thought, every action, and every institution formally taken for granted. Everything is changing. You, your family, your neighborhood, your education, your job, your government, and your relation to the others, and they're changing dramatically. This might as well have been written yesterday. Uh, it might as well be in McL Brian McLaren's latest book, Everything Must Change, or in uh, any number of other things, or in Philip Clayton's Transforming Christian Theology. And McLuhan is writing this uh, in the 60s, uh, I believe it's 67, um, and, and he goes on to say, Societies have always been shaped more by the nature of the media by which people communicate than the content of that communication. The alphabet, for instance, is a technology that is absorbed by the very young child in a completely unconscious manner, by osmosis, so to speak. Words and the meaning of words predispose the child to think and act automatically in certain ways. The alphabet and print technology fostered and encouraged a fragmenting process, a process of specialism and of detachment. So instead of needing to listen to the whole world or see the whole world or take in the physical, the, um, the smells of the world, we begin to read linearly from left to right, one line at a time, top to bottom in the West. And uh, he says it, it helps to fragment our world into a very kind of rigid, logical, visual way of thinking. He calls it a visual, rational way of thinking. 
Electric technology fosters and encourages unification and involvement. It is impossible to understand social and cultural changes without a knowledge of the workings of media. 1967, he is writing this. He goes on to predict uh, in this book and elsewhere that beyond the age of the electrical, which is what he was writing, will come the age of something that we now would call the digital age. And he says, what will happen in the digital age is a re-tribalization as a result of the involvement. And if we look at things like blogging cultures and um, the, the rise of things like the, um, in, in my particular denomination, the Religious Society of Friends, the Quakers, there's a group of us called uh, Convergent Friends, or we sometimes get kind of called that. Um, people who are interested in emerging uh, church thought, who are also um, Quakers. And there are so few Quakers in the country anyway that we would not have found each other in a consistent way if it weren't for the internet. So McLuhan's prediction that the shift of the new media of blogging and YouTube and technologies that the internet predisposes us towards are helping to, what he says, re-tribalize us make us connect to one another in intimate ways that we wouldn't necessarily have done before. I, I take um, two big things out of it. Um, the first is an understanding that how we express ourselves can sometimes change how we experience the world. And um, in regard to theology, that means how we express our experience of the divine can change our experience of the divine. The medium of our expression and communication helps to shade and shape and alter how we experience the world. And so if the people in our congregations are told the only way to experience the divine are the ways that have already been articulated in the manners that have already been articulated and the only legitimated ones are the ones communicated in the manner, content, form, and uh, to the audience that they have always been articulated, then we will be uh, snubbing and not allowing new ways of thinking about communication to arise. So as ministers and pastors and folks engage in the work of the you know, renewal of the, of the church and uh, revitalization of it, it's important that we encourage people to find their own voice. Uh, McLuhan says, In the name of progress, our official culture is striving to force the new media to do the work of the old. In theology, after Google we will encounter new ways of doing theology which were not suited to the publication of books, uh, treaties tacked to walls in Germany, or to academic conferences where you only get in if you've got a PhD. The pairing thought that has to go along with that first one, that while I want to encourage people to speak their own voice and to find their own expression of the divine and to articulate it and to be uh, their own uh, theologians, is that not everything everyone says is going to be right. And so that's the other piece of McLuhan that's important. He says that in this age of interconnection and communication and information be, being so quickly accessed, and he's writing that in 67, so imagine how much faster it is now, Retribalization will necessarily occur. That groups of people will be uh, bound together around some of this information and they will uh, re-communitize themselves. They will form communities of discernment and conversation and connection in a way that he saw was on the decline when he was writing. So if I'm spouting some crazy stuff, some of you need to tell me. Now, in my case, it would be either some of you or some of the people in my congregation right home down the street. We'll see in about 20 minutes. But the point is that community is essential. And as we find ways to connect with one another, those communities of connection have got to hold us accountable. They've got to become communities and not just places that pat us on the back for uh, saying whatever it is we say because it's new and novel. There is certainly something to be said for novelty. However, novelty is not the same thing as truth. And I think McLuhan would agree on that, and he would add to it, truth or not, 
how it is we say things is changing the way we think about the world. And we've got to hold on to that.